Yo, what's going on then, guys? So, if you're looking for a competitive deck, <coughs> relatively budget, ready for nationals, I think I have the list just for you. Um, I've been playing Necrobs for a little while, around about two weeks. Um, obviously, if you guys don't know, I am a relatively budget player, and I borrow pretty much all the cards, but I actually own every card for this deck. Um, it is super budget, it's super cool. I, I'm not going to include a side deck in this video, just because I might be playing this deck for nationals. Um, but considering nationals is next weekend for UK... Let's just have a look at the deck anyway. Um, so we are playing Necros. So we're playing three Bryonek, three Valkyrus. So the reason you're maxing out on these is because turn one, what you want to do is you just want to protect Unicor. So the idea is your Kaleidoscope for Unicor using Herald of Artlight, search of Valkyrus, and you can just happily pass, and then you'll break their board piece by piece and just OTK them next turn. Um, Valkyrus is also just a really good card, it allows you to draw two of your incantations. If you open weird hands of like incantation shirt, you can always search those tribute off your two incantations and draw some extra cards as well. Two Clawsless and two Trishula. Uh, we're only playing two Clawsless because I find if you have more than one copy, your hen hand tends to be quite cloggy. Um, and I'm playing two Trishula because this helps you play around Fogblade in the Orcus matchup. And it's also just a generally good card. Um, it's a lot weaker than it used to be back in the day, don't worry. Um, but it's still a pretty good card anyway. Uh, one Gangnir and one Unicor. No decisive armor in this list. Unicor is obviously broken. Um, but I want to talk about Gangnir for a second. So the more popular trap decks get, the better Gangnir gets. So against True Draco, you can summon this card. And it says during either player's turn, discard a card to destroy a card your opponent controls or a Necros card. Um, so it kills Diagram, it kills all the good stuff against the Trap decks, it just pops around in back row as well. Um, and it also protects your Necros monsters from battle, which is also pretty good, and card effect as well. So you can protect your Unicor um, in matchups where you think your opponent's actually conveniently Draco. Um, but you won't be protecting Unicor, you should be protecting Valkyrus. And then the last one of is obviously the one of Shurit. Don't really need to talk about this card, it came off the ban list, and I'm incredibly happy. Um, so onto the non-Necros monsters, we play two Talos Mandra, two Candol, two Pencil Plume, and one Bookstone. Um, don't really need to explain these. Uh, Pencil Plume uh, adds Brian Eck back from your graveyard, so it's essentially another copy of Talos Mandra once you get that engine going. And Bookstone's just to repair your cycles and your mirrors in general. And then the one Chalice Slime to give all of these cards utility. Um, it's not 100% mandatory, but I do think this card is super cool anyway. Um, and I just like to play it as a one-off. Um, then for the non, for, well, for the rest of the engine cards, just three Manju and three Senju. Um, I am playing something really funky to allow these to dodge Fogblade. Um, <laughs> going second, not that you're intending on going second, but this is your way that make you make Dweller. You'll do your usual Unicorn play, and then you'll set up a Dweller with these guys against Orcus, because... Unicor's not fantastic, and your Dweller comes out on 2200, so it's really hard to kill unless they open specifically connector or drones. So, that's pretty cool. Or if they let their danger cards resolve, but if they're resolving dangers under Dweller, you're usually winning anyway. Uh, for the ritual spells, 2 Cycle, 2 Kaleidoscope, 2 Mirror. I wouldn't change this, and then the 1 Incantation Ritual spell. It's just a 7th Ritual spell that has a little bit of... Um, Extra utility, allowing to recycle itself um, by tributing incantations, which frees up your new monsters in and stops the incantations from locking you out of your extra deck. Um, and you can also summon Chalice Slime with it, not that that matters. Um, three preparation of rights, this is pretty obvious. Um, you can do some cool stuff with Chalice Slime where you Chalice Slime first, discarding a spell, so you get the additional value out of this. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, one up, start goblin, and then it's not a Ben Gregson deck profile if we're not playing two copies of enemy controller. This is what allows your Manju and Sendu to dog, dodge Fogblade in the Orcus matchup. Um, and also allows you Trishula to dodge Fogblade and all sorts of other stuff, and I think it's just really cool to play. And then onto the extra deck. Uh, one Nephthys, this is the only Link monster we play. Um, absolutely insane. It's just Gleeful Towers. You beat Striker by summoning this card. It's really good. Um, one Dweller, one Utopia. One Gaga Gaga Cowboy. Um, you should have a Utopia Lightning in the extra deck, but we won't talk about that because I didn't own any cards. So, yeah. Um, for the Synchros, uh, for our level 12 targets, we're just playing two level 12s, uh, two level 10s, 
so this allows you to summon Valk and Unicorn or Trishula and Corsalus. This allows you to summon um, specifically Trishula and Corsalus. Uh, sorry, Gungnir and Corsalus, and also Bryanac and Unicorn. Um, you play the level six just to summon Bryanac out your hand. Um, you play the level seven to summon Unicorn and Corsalus. Uh, we are playing a random one of eight. I can't remember the reason we put this in here. It m this is the card we cut in Future Pickle Lightning. It's meant to be backwards and a proxy. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> and also, Trishula, this allows you to summon Brian Ack and Corsalus. And then this allows you to summon Unicorn for your turn one play. Um, if you'd like me to go into like more in depth with the deck profile as far as the budget's concerned, please let me know. Obviously, you should be playing Extravagance if you're looking to play this super competitively with like three Herald. But obviously, with my lack of owning cards, and I appreciate that some of the people don't own all the cards, I figured I'd give you guys a budget alternative of Necros, considering how expensive it can be. Um, as a whole, I like playing blue cards that don't have arrows on them. And this deck is really, really cool. I'll also be bringing out an anti-meta version that plays some barrier statues and some really cool stuff. But that's another thing for another day. I really hope you did enjoy this deck profile, guys. If you did, please leave a like, please subscribe, we're almost at... 200 subs now and it'd be amazing if we could hit that before my birthday in august i really hope you guys did enjoy the video have an amazing day shout out to the hobby vault and peace